I am Aaron Celestian, and I'm Curator of Mineral Sciences at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. So this is a gypsum crystal. It's used in our daily lives. It's most commonly used as drywall in, in construction material. This particular crystal came from the Cave of Swords mine in Mexico, and this particular mine produced crystals that were close to the size of a school bus. They, they are absolutely massive crystals. They grow at extremely high temperatures, for humans anyway, temperatures ranging from about 150 degrees Fahrenheit to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, very hot temperatures. And as they grow out, they're just growing, 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 and anything that gets trapped uh, by the crystal gets included in the crystal. So within this one, there are tiny little pockets of fluids that still hold the water that the crystal was growing in, and it also holds the bacteria that was in that water at the time. This crystal is about 50,000 to 60,000 years old, and the bacteria inside of it are still viable. You can still bring them back to life. They're dormant right now, but they can be brought back to life. Now, this is a really interesting story in that if we look for life on other planets and moons, this is 50,000 year old life in here. You go to another planet or a moon, where do you look for signs of life? One place to look is deep inside of these crystals that may not necessarily be on the surface of the planet, but hidden in the subsurface, protected from solar radiation, protected from the harsh environments of the planet's surface. So look for the oceans, look for the lakes, look for water that hasn't been there for uh, millions of years. Find those crystals and then look inside of them to see if there's any trapped organisms. These crystals grow in these particular shapes is, it's not random, it's actually dictated by the symmetry of how the atoms arrange themselves. Salt crystals, for example. Uh, normal table salt crystals are the mineral halite that grows uh, from the sodium chloride cubic array of atoms. Now there's different symmetries. This one here, this is obviously not cubic symmetry, this symmetry here is monoclinic which means that there are going to be angles that are inclined to each other. And all gypsum crystals will grow in this uh, constrained monoclinic symmetry. Some crystal faces might grow faster than others and they will get different widths and lengths and so on, but they'll all have the same angles between the crystal faces. This mesolite group of crystals, these are what we call acicular crystal growth. And you can see that they grow and they radiate out from a central point down here. Now this grew within uh, a much larger cavity that was filled with liquid and the crystals grow into that cavity and present themselves like this. Now why they grow in this needle shape like this, that's something that we don't really fully understand right now. There's no way of predicting the, the shape of the crystal as it's growing. But there is a way of predicting the angles between all of the crystal faces. The study of, of these minerals is not just limited to museums, it's not just limited to geology, but it's, it's physics, it's chemistry, it's mathematics, it's all those different sciences combined that, that are used to describe the properties of these types of, of minerals. In your daily lives, you are encountering minerals all the time, in cosmetics, in your toothpaste, when you're cooking, the salts, all the different spices that you're using. There's lots of minerals that are being used to either cook with or process with or clean things with. They are absolutely everywhere you go.